So we're one minute. Uh, we're one minute in, and we have uh, less than half of the people here. So, as I'd like to just like to encourage everyone to get. Everyone should be here. Everyone should be used to being on time. Um, this whole professionalism checklist is an important component. Um, I can't force anyone to be here, but it's an important important habit to get into. Uh, so, in terms of announcements. So first, everyone should be here. If you're not here, um, well, if you're not here, you're not hearing me anyways. Uh, so we have two guest talks today. And I know everyone is tired. But yesterday, again, we had less than half of the class who came um, for what I thought was a really fascinating, interesting guest talk, super useful. And it was really good to see that the people that were there asked a number of good questions. So very good. Today, we have two guest talks. Um, normally, we try not to schedule uh, so many different people um, at the same time. That being said, um, we schedule, it depends on the availability of our speakers, everyone is busy. So today we have a guest talk, uh, Christoph, from, uh, he's one of the people who actually designed or helped to design this week's challenge, or you could say he proposed the key content for this week's challenge. So he's at 2 p.m. UTC. And then at 3 p.m. UTC, we have the uh, vice president for AI, at Infineon, so it's a very large semiconductor company. Um, both companies are based here in Germany, and so we expect some really good content. I think especially for Christoph should be super interesting. Um, let's see how it goes with uh, Nico, the vice president from Infineon. We haven't heard from him in a little bit, so there's a 10% chance that that would be rescheduled. We'll let you know. Um, but it is, I know everyone's busy, Nevertheless, the expectation is that everyone comes and broadens their T, um, asking questions, understanding what, uh, what are some of the real challenges that industry faces, I thought was quite fascinating. So I, I had asked a question, and I didn't expect his answer. Um, the biggest challenge that he says his company faces, they're a company with 50,000 employees, 100 years of history. Who can guess what the biggest challenge they face in the data science department is? Somebody put up their hand and somebody who wasn't, well, I guess people were there. So maybe somebody can tell me what they say, what uh, what he said, what is the biggest challenge that they face? Fumbani? Uh, from what I heard, the biggest challenge that they face is uh, getting the data from different places where it's stored and trying to match that data so that it can be useful for the data scientist and the people above. Exactly. So it's there are big challenges data engineering. How do they get access to the data and get it into a usable form? So these sorts of uh, these sorts of insights and this level of prioritization, I believe it to be super useful. So guest talk today, 2 p.m. UTC and 3 p.m. UTC back to back. And uh, two other announcements. One is I've, I have about half of the profiles, um, not just the profiles. I mean this 50-word description plus the five skills. We want to post these publicly. And so I need that from everybody. So if you haven't sent that in, um, please send it in. I, our, our job is, among others, to help you guys get a job. And this is all, I know we're pushing you to do different things, but we want to get you uh, employed. And so all of this is towards giving you um, visibility and the skills that you need. So please do send that to me. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, and the second uh, announcement, or I don't know, this is probably announcement number four or five by now. Um, so we, our next week's challenge will build on this week's challenge, and it's going to end on Thursday. So next Friday, the 1st of October, we're going to plan our graduation. It'll be online. Um, we're going to do it uh, in the middle of the day. So submissions next week will be on Thursday. And on Friday, we're looking forward to a celebration, um, the end of our this phase of our time together. Um, we can all keep our videos on, be in a nice place. If some of you manage to be together, wonderful. Um, I don't know what the COVID restrictions are like there. But we want to celebrate uh, the work that we've done together, the end of this training phase, and the start of the alumni phase. So that's next Friday, um, tentatively 10 UTC, but to be finalized. So looking forward to that. Please do plan to attend. Um, celebrating an achievement is important, and bringing the whole class together or the whole cohort together is also really useful. So 
please start ironing your nice clothes. And if some of you have not left your bedrooms in three months, it may be time to take a shower, um, to shave, to do your hair, uh, to do whatever, whatever else you need to do to look uh, nice. So looking forward to that. We're going to be reaching out to with some planning around that. Um, looking forward to people making uh, contributions or speeches and or some remarks on things that they um, they reflect on in their time here. So with that, I will stop. Uh, any questions on the announcements? You guys, you guys can just message me, so I'll hand over to my left. I think there's an AMA today as well. So yeah, Tiana, who's doing the AMA today? Azaria, okay. Uh, a recap of the announcements. Yeah, so I'm going to drop off the stand-up, but I think uh, Yatiana can recap the announcements. Otherwise, you can just reach out to me, Azaria. Okay, Malat, over to you. Okay, thank you, Arun. So let us start our usual stand-up. Who wants to go first or who wants to be the icebreaker for today's stand-up? Who, want, who wants to share his progress with us? Okay, Jacinda. Good morning. Good morning, Malit. How are you? Fine. Uh, my progress isn't that good. Uh, I wasn't able to, to load the data correctly. I'm getting an error for the foreign key. So I'm trying to solve that and also so that I can be on track next to set up the DP. So if anyone was able to to load his data with uh, having uh, foreign key references on uh, other tables, please uh, help me out if you can. Thank you. OK. Um, this is nice update and short and precise, precise update. So let us hear from others and who want uh, who have done this data loading with foreign key. Just help Jackindo, or else you can write it on the rocket chat and someone will interact with that. I think I don't have to like to go that old school method. Just take your opportunity to talk, to share your progress. Who wants to go next? Uh, good morning, Madek. Good morning. Mm, okay, so I don't have that much update to make. Uh, today I was talking uh, to Fambani and he sent me a nice link, so it was helpful uh, on mainly brushing up and understanding what uh, the DBT is working. And the other thing is, like, uh, I think we need uh, more or different data sets and try to understand the business. Uh, logic to yesterday's uh, submission. I tried to submit yesterday's submission. So I've submitted. So have you tried to go through the rest of the work, or what's your plan for today? Okay, my plan for today is like uh, to work more on the DBT, uh, create more um, schemas and uh, mm -hmm. try to understand it better. The other is uh, to start working on airflow. That's my plan. Yeah, no, just to remind you, there are also other tools, like apart from this DBT, you should have to be familiar with Redash and the data quality check checking mechanism, so don't forget them also. OK. So, okay. thanks, Deborah. Uh, 
anyone else who wants to share their progress kid hello hi malat hi good morning morning um so for me i spent like two days trying to understand the data so monday and tuesday i was trying to understand the data and basically what we were trying to do then i started uh, trying to uh load the data into my database i'm using postgres sql to as my database and also as my warehouse so i was able to do that mm-hmm. and uh i also managed to install dbt and airflow so i'm trying to now understand how to integrate all of the tools on docker so that it's a smooth pipeline yeah mm, okay that's good thank you so anyone else anyone who wants to share and who have major blocker or challenge in anyone who wants to share us like or else shall i ask toyin hi good morning good morning um so i was able to uh, use my dbt yeah uh, connected with my sql yes I'm able to do that but now i'm having issues uh connecting dbt and airflow I'm having issues connecting and dbt and airflow I tried to use a bash operator to run the mm-hmm. CLI code but it was not like I was getting error for dbt run so I don't think that that I don't think that would work uh how do you use the airflow one what how do you use airflow like you have created a separate uh, airflow environment or airflow um installation environment or you are already using that in your uh, dbt environment oh okay um with my airflow i've created uh, a connection before because i used airflow to move some data to database just part of data so i did that on monday but uh i've not used uh, dbt to move all of the data to the uh, database that i want to use for this assignment so i just like used bash operator to do like dbt run dbt uh docs generate docs so boy it was not working can you post it on the rocket chat okay okay i will post it good uh, so thank you to int who wants to go next and i'm just wondering why is it not active so are we, is that just because the the questions are different i mean which is not or why is it just people even if like let's say mahalit is not there 
um, and then you even want to run it yourself. So who's going to take care of that um, at the work environment? Who's going to be the driving? I think it's, it seems, yes, everybody's tired. I think we understand it's a lot of work, but it's also a responsibility to ensure that the environment at least stays interesting, that you're, you're wasting your time otherwise. Like you're here, I think 29 people are here, which I think the others should have been here. And then you are like, you know, there's no activity or the kind of updates are not energetic. So can we try to use this time because this is the most important Okay, thank you people for that. So, Fumbani, go ahead. All right, so for me yesterday, I was able to make my submission on time. I created uh, my data warehouse using Postgres and I've also connected it to DPT. And today I'm planning on working on Airflow and how I can integrate Airflow and DPT. And also, I think if I have time, then I will go until uh, connecting to Redash so that I can do the visualization. And I also have like uh, the other problem that I have is the data. I haven't really have that good connection between the data and the tables. So I think that's what I also wait for. Thank you. Sorry, just can you can we repeat? Oh, oh, I'm saying like. Uh, I managed to, yesterday, I managed to create the data warehouse using Postgres and I've connected it to DPT. And today my plan is to work on Airflow and how I can integrate Airflow and DPT. And also, maybe if I have time, I can look at Redash and all that. But the blocker that I have is, uh, the blocker that I have is, I don't really have like a good connection between the data tables in the data warehouse. So yeah. Good connection? Like, yeah, like to insert data into the warehouse or like the the relationships between the tables in the data warehouse in the database. Like you are trying to use the big data one, so you will split it into smaller data sets. Then that will be the easiest way to tackle or to get um, uh, inserted into your data warehouse or database. Yeah, so like once I, once I, once I insert that into the data warehouse, then uh, I, that should be the only table in the data warehouse or I also have to create another table and make some relationships between the two. Yeah, you can create another table in which have uh, a relationship with the previous one to get another insight from the data like a splitting with different uh, what yeah. call it, different variables or different mechanisms like either removing some columns there and having some sort of insight from the data like which you think of you get best insight that will answer the their requirement yeah. the business requirement so you will have more and more CSV files, which have different categories and which have a relationship yeah. with them. So that will yeah. help you to create different schema there. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mbani. Michael Dako, I see you have raised your hand. Yeah, hello. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. Yes, um, from my end, yesterday I had a meeting with um, <clears throat> Jackenda and uh, Desmond. And we we're actually talking about how we're going to put the data together because we, um, from Jackenda's end, he noticed that um, the to get the connection between the data, some some of them you would have to try and figure out how you would do it at like I mean, how you do it personally. So uh, after the meeting, we try. I I at my end also looked at the other data sets which were there, and then I I was 
<clears throat> I decided to work on um get get a table separately for the weekdays, get a table separately for the stations, and then get a, a table which has um which takes the uh, uh, ID for the stations as a foreign key from the stations table, and then we uh, uh, take the weekdays too from the weekdays table as a foreign key, and then put them together. So after the meeting, I tried implementing that, and I wasn't able to implement that fully, but I think this morning I tried, and I've, I think I'm making some progress with it. What I'll try to, what I'll do afterwards is try to look at how I'd be able to get airflow and <clears throat> and then the, the, the DBT working. With the um with the submissions, I was able to submit the data for. I mean, I was able to submit for the um, GitHub repository, and I'm still working on the other ones to ensure. Them. Though I wouldn't get any marks, I'm still making sure that I'll get something on there and then also put it as well. So, I mean, that is um, the update from my end. Okay, that's good. And um, one school next. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, then okay. I was from my end. Uh, yesterday, I was just uh, I tried. Uh, I did create my house and connected it to DBT, and was able to process like the lineage graph. And as I put the lineage graph, and I said probably there are things I didn't understand proper, proper, properly about the data connections. So that's what I want to go into today and understand how to create a lineage graph that actually makes sense. That's with the relationships between the data. Uh, with that also, I'm just trying to finish up on how to link Airflow with the with DBT now so that it can be like scheduled to keep on sending data to the data warehouse. Yeah, I guess that's it from. Okay, good. So once we next like. Abraham. Good morning. Okay, good morning. Good morning. So can you share can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, good morning. Good morning, Abraham. Just to share us your experience your um, progress. Okay. Uh, yesterday uh, I tried to fix some of my mistakes on the profile based on the feedback that I got earlier. Uh, then I tried to. Hello. I think Abraham's okay. connection is not stable. So Is that mine? Okay, let her go ahead. Um, morning. Good morning. Yeah, morning, Mar morning, everyone. Um, so yesterday I did make a submission. Um, like please, I didn't understand the lineage graph, uh, and also the different components. Um, there are a couple, there are a lot of components. Um, like the airflow. Um, and the DBT. Um, having to deal with the database. Um, and especially um, thinking about how to containerize them and how to make them all interact at the same time. I was running into a lot of issues. Um, so I spent a lot of time debugging, uh, um, but I do hope uh, that I do understand. I do get a better understanding of the lineage graph and um, a better understanding of the project as a whole uh, today. So have you fixed your yesterday's issue or? Yeah, um, I, I I think it might might have been um, uh, my SQL version. Um, I had to start from scratch again. 
um, I had to delete everything and yeah, and it fixed that. Thanks. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. So, I think we have time to or two. So, just use your time and who wants to share us or who have burning issue. Or I, I can I can ask one other question. Okay, maybe Zaranam go. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I was uh, having issue with uh, Airflow in Docker. It was uh, a resource issue. Uh, it says like when I try to use the Airflow Docker image, it needs uh, at least uh, four gigabyte of memory. But my total memory was like 3.8, so it couldn't work properly. So I was planning uh, to do without Docker and Airflow for, for the time being. This is my the issue that I'm having. Besides that, yesterday I tried uh, DBT, uh, tried to some of the features like uh, the lineage graph and the models. Uh, this is my progress. Okay. Thank you for sharing this. Uh, so for the time being, if you have no, uh, like, the, if there is a resource issue, you can go without this uh, Docker. But just to think about the Docker, try to simulate it with the rest of the tasks without a flow. Okay. Like containerizing the rest. Okay, I'll try that. I, I yeah, think an another too. another one maybe you can try Zalam is that so I was just about to ch checking the size of the Docker. So is the image that big? I thought it shouldn't be that big, right? Um, like just the Docker, like the Airflow itself. But if it is big, maybe you could install it just using pip in one of your other Docker. And then that way you can find it, probably it might be easier. You mean the, uh, first installing, then dockerizing it? No, so if you have a Docker file, for example, so are you, so are you constructing a Docker file yourself or are you just loading the image? Loading the official yeah, image. Yeah, so maybe the official image may have more than what you need. And usually how you decrease or um, the Docker size is by actually installing it yourself using a very light um, Docker base. So that would be like Ubuntu, just some of this, uh, uh, not instead of the Ubuntu actually, there are some that really gives you like almost 80 megabyte or just 300 megabyte um, with Python. So I think I'm just, I forgot the name. Um, So then if you start from that and then just only install yourself just in the Docker file, you basically just specify how you would install, pip install, then it should just be very easier. Most of the time that I do that if something is big, if something has more than what I want. So. Okay, I'll look into that. Uh, I hope you have, you have that question. Yeah, so it's, I think this, mm -hmm. the sizes are... Yeah, so uh, so there is, yeah, there is Ubuntu Slim, for example, you could use just as a base. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. So in a, in a way, just... I know it's a small amount of time that you have and you may not be able to explore, but these are just not that difficult uh, with a couple of hours 
of work, you can solve some of these issues instead of, yeah, if, I mean, if you can solve it within less than that amount of time by going around, that's great. But if it's something is taking you long or if it's kind of blocking you, then actually just easier is to solve. Um, and most of the time there's already somebody who has done it. So it's, um, yeah, get just that feeling that always these things are, so many people are using, therefore there is like already something that is that solves your own problem. So at least in the, in the case of Docker, size has been a big issue for many people and there are many, many workarounds. Thank you, everyone, for that. So, I think our time is already gone. If you have a question, just raise for us. Let us stop here and uh, So I think Yatiana is probably here. We can continue with that, maybe. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. So thank you so we much, can, Malek. We can stop probably the, the recording. The recording. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Maybe you could help with that because I'm using my phone and I can't seem to.